Hello again, I am Kelly Young. I'm the author of the Travel Writer Cozy Mystery series, and I'm here to read you, <laughs> and that was my cat. Um, <laughs> I am here to read you chapter one of my very first standalone novel um, called Flurry's Ending. So, here we go. No one had wanted her to go. They had said it was too soon, that everything would still be there in the spring when the deep northern Ontario snow melted and the poorly maintained roads would be more passable. They'd said it would be too painful. Kim's eyes misted over as she thought of all the unsolicited but well-meaning advice, thinking pain came from many different sources. She was in pain no matter where she went. The road through the windshield of the four-wheel drive SUV they had affectionately nicknamed the Beast blurred briefly and she wiped at the tears angrily with her free hand. Ultimately, it had been her decision. Widowed for only a month, her husband mowed down by a drunk driver while out for a late season bike ride, her biggest regret was that she never got the opportunity to say goodbye. What she got was a knock on the door announcing the arrival of the police, there to break the news. She thought it was Paul at the door, that he'd forgotten his keys again. She'd started to laugh, ready to tease him for his sheepish look as she opened the door. The laugh died in her throat as she took in the two police officers on her porch. Bitter bile rose in its place. Choking her briefly, she stared at the police in denial, even as her brain raced ahead to provide a reason for their presence. They were a male-female team. The man was taller than Kim, but not by much, probably about six feet tall if she were to guess. He was older, not far from retirement from the looks of him, just like Paul, she thought. But unlike Paul, this man's buttons strained to hold in his girth. The redness in his kind, sad face could easily, as easily have been from the walk from the curb to her door as to the dread of delivering the news. The woman beside him was almost dwarfed by his presence, but managed to exude an aura of competence despite her diminutive size of only about five feet tall. She was young, stern-looking, and very serious. Her hair was pulled back into a tight bun at the nape of her neck, allowing her uniform hat to dwarf her face. She seemed very out of her element at that moment. She moved her hat and looked up at Kim and then at her partner and back again, opened her mouth as though to speak, then looked in what must have been a rare moment of indecision back at her partner. Help me, he, her look said. It spoke volumes. Her partner cleared his throat. <clears throat> Mrs. Johnson, he asked the tenderness in his voice, its sharp contrast to the official uniform, the badge, the gun. Kim nodded mutely, her hazel eyes wide with mixture of fear and re realization as they met his. We're with the OPP, he said, obviously stalling. She didn't hear his introductions and later couldn't remember their names. He was putting off the unpleasant task with small talk, but finally he got a resigned look on his face and blurted out the news. There's been an accident. Your husband was hit by a car. He looked at his partner for support and she nodded. We're sorry for your loss, she said kindly. Driving north in the beast, Kim remembered those words as if they were spoken yesterday. But, as everyone kept reminding her, it had only been a month ago. The memory brought tears to her eyes and she wiped at them again. She couldn't take time for tears, she thought, as she drove on to the ramp for Highway 11, attempting to outrace sadness and winter as she headed toward their cottage. She needed to retrieve some treasured things that she couldn't imagine getting through winter without, not now that she was alone. If she was honest with herself, she was also racing away, away from family and friends who were smothering her, well-wishers who looked at her with pity in their eyes, and the loneliness of nights all at once. Once all those people went away and silence rang through the house with a loud echo. The news started on the radio, but she couldn't, didn't register any of it. What did it matter to her? She was alone. All the plans they had made for their retirement together, once their sons had moved on to their own lives, crumpled into bits and blown away. But when the weather report came on, it made, made it through the grief and registered with her. And why wouldn't it? The weather was the main reason people had given her to convince her to postpone the trip north. It was late November, and it was supposed to snow a lot. Of course, none of the forecasters could agree on when exactly the deluge would come. Having grown up in the north, she couldn't bring herself to worry too much. She had supplies to last a week or more if, at the cottage if necessary. But now she was on the road, and that was a different matter. Sitting safe and cozy by a fire in a familiar cottage, surrounded by the comforting memories that her family had built over the years, 
as snow floated down around her was one thing. Getting caught on the road in driving snow whiteouts and drifting was something else entirely. She turned the radio up and read along with the rather report as Tex scrolled across the face of the radio, glancing quickly between the road ahead and the dashboard. Chance of flurries today, changing to snow heavy at times in snow belt areas by evening, the answer, announcer said. Temperatures will be dropping to a low of minus 10 degrees Celsius overnight. Accumulation of 10 to 20 centimeters of snow tonight continuing on Monday. Heavier in the snow belt areas with an additional 20 centimeters expected. High tomorrow of minus 2 degrees, dropping to minus 8 overnight into Tuesday. Winds are expected to increase overnight, causing heavily drifted Drifting in some areas, especially near Lake Huron and Georgian Bay, gusts up to 70 kilometers an hour are possible. More snow is expected throughout the remainder of the week, with a total of 40 to 60 centimeters expected. Relief is in sight for the weekend, with warmer temperatures and sunny skies expected. Kim sighed as she turned the radio down again. She was glad she had decided to go away from the lake instead of taking the scenic Highway 400 route. One thing was for sure, she'd chosen the better of their two vehicles to drive north. The car wouldn't have done well in the snow, even with snow tires. The beast, a large, sturdy enclave, was much more suited to the bad weather. Paul had wanted something big, despite her arguments that it was too hard on gas budget. Not only had she lost that argu argument, but she'd also lost on the color choice. She'd wanted red, and he'd wanted blue. The beast was blue. Kim shook off the memory and turned her attention to driving the vehicle in question. And I accidentally skipped some. We don't want a red vehicle. Going back to what I missed, Paul had insisted his blue eyes looking especially steely with determination. But it's so pretty, Kim had pouted, looking sadly at the deep red vehicle sitting on the lot. Paul sighed. We're not going for pretty, he said. We want something that can tow, that we can put racks on top for the canoe that I won't want to drive, she finished for him sulkily, looking up with him. Adam with determination. He chuckled. Besides, he added, the cops stop red cards more often than any other color. They stand out and the cops notice them. If you don't speed, they won't notice you, Kim said, not quite able to keep the wine out of her voice. If it's not red, it'll fade into the background, he countered, and they won't notice. The beast was blue. There we go. We're back where we were. Kim shook off the memory and turned her attention to driving the vehicle in question. The storm was on her heels. She could feel it in that way that all northerners do. All she had to do was beat it to her destination. She could think of worse things than being storm stayed at their cottage for five days. My cottage, she silently corrected herself. It's mine now. Tears threatened again as she looked up at the sky briefly to distract herself. It was gray, the gray of clouds pregnant with snow. Light flakes were starting to fall and she could feel the wind starting to blow the SUV sideways as she maneuvered the Aurelia traffic on her way north. She was nowhere near the exit to, onto Highway 124, let alone the turn off from it to the road that would eventually take her to the cottage. She glanced at the clock and experienced a quick flash of concern. The cottage was at least two hours away and one more snow belt away. She shivered, but rather than turn the heat up and risk getting sleepy, she pulled the elastic out of her long golden hair, releasing it from the ponytail she usually wore and letting it fall down around her shoulders, providing some warmth for her neck. Then she turned her attention to the road and the creeping unease that she had that the snow was going to catch up with her. She briefly considered stopping at her sister's home just outside of Aurelia, but didn't dismiss the possibility as too stressful. I can make it to the cottage, she thought. She just had to beat the storm. And that's it. Sorry for the little snafu, but I didn't want to do it over again, so at least you know I'm human. Uh, enjoy. I, if you liked it, Pick it up at Amazon. It's available on ebook and paperback. Thank you. Bye.